I imagine you're wondering why my past videos haven't had any commentary. The simple answer is there was a heat wave that came over our town and my room became unbearably hot. Just too hot. It was three times the heat outside, it was like 30 degrees outside, there was humidity. I mean, one of our neighbours collapsed from exhaustion. I was forced downstairs into my room, into the downstairs room, which is away from the computer. So I had to leave the computer to load up everything and upload onto YouTube. I couldn't say any commentary because it would have probably got me close to being killed if I stay behind. So instead, I just upload the um, upload the whole thing, left like that. to see you again, my dear. Your arrival is filled with fortunatality itself. Really? I didn't even know. My pregnant show is about to pop. It requires only a medicament of your health velocity. I don't have much experience, but I do need to reconstruct my... Ricky Marta, have a nice screwdriver, nearly new, or a nice hammer if you... There's a train into. that's corrupting Wonderland, and I'm looking for help to restrain or destroy it. Most vexatious, no doubt, would address that monstrosity directly, as to say, eventually. Now, let's intermediate more important matters. Due to a large hysterical foul-up, some of the show's requisites need to be gathered. The munificent script needs fetching. The writer's overly imaginative and exploring several endings. Then you'll need to assemble the show's tune deaf music. And finally, gather our stars! The show's tasty, uh, nay, tasteful performers. You should leave now. The essentiality of haste is essential. It hardly seems you're ready for the show. Why can't you assemble these things yourself? An impresario has arrangements. Ducks in a row, fish to fry, calls to Newcastle, etc., etc. Fetch the script from the writer, then we can batter or matter or matter as the case may be. Is the writer cantankerous? To a personage of your distinguished repudiation? I blush at the notionality. He's an octopus, by the by. Lives over that way. Shut up. So, as I was saying, I'd uh, leave everything running upstairs. I then went downstairs where we had an extractor fan set up and had to wait out the heat while watching um, Miss World. Which was, yeah, a good showing. I mean, Chinese know how to do their thing. I thought I'd explain for a moment how extractor fans work. I, when we were using it, because it was the first time I had to use it, I thought it was an ingenious system. How the extractor fan works is it brings in. Um, air comes through um, one part, which is at the back. The system then cools the air, and while allowing some air to go through, water is then condenses. If you spent as much time practicing as you do in Wonderland, you'd be the next Sullivan or Gilbert or one of them. The water then condenses and slowly drips through the machine. And this water is then gathered in a side pipe which is then siphoned and we had to put like a bowl down to collect the excess water. Which was all freezing cold. And I thought it was ingenious because do you know how humidity works? Humidity is basically um, the air which is heavier because water is... Air which is heavier because um, hot hot air has, um, sorry, the heat has caused water to become, to become, the sun's rays have caused the water that, or perspiration they gathered on people, to turn into, um, you, to evaporate and become like this, because, um, it can't, it doesn't go high enough to reach, like, the clouds say. Um, it instead gathers along the lower part where we were, and because my room is the highest in the house, all the hot air and humidity rose to my room and then steadily descended downwards. So downstairs was cooler than upstairs. Upstairs was horrible, horrible, and it was still pretty bad downstairs. 
how the air extractor fan worked was it cooled down the air because we find it stuffy because basically there's not enough oxygen in the air because the evaporated water you start to breathe that in as well as normal oxygen and carbon dioxide and nitro, um, high nitrogen that are all in the air so it becomes more oppressive and harder to breathe what the extract fan was doing was it was cooling the moisture turning it back into its liquid form so that the air it sent out was not just cold but was um, devoid of the mo moisture thus making it easier to breathe so it was far better sitting down there but then the moment you you could tell the difference because the moment you stepped out of the room it was like stepping across a barrier suddenly you were hit by huge mountains of heat kind of thing you had to retreat back inside I only left really around about 9 or 10 o'clock at night when it was cold again and by then it was too late to obviously change these videos they had been uploaded without the audio and it had to be done but at least you know something now about extractor fans that you didn't know before in how that they work which I found still ingenious I also decide I'm going to do a get rid of these nonsense starting intros because I think I don't think you particularly care who I am and you know it, I don't think it should matter this is gameplay footage of a game that I play that I'm quite often get, not getting paid for even to do the commentary. This commentary is not necessary. I don't get paid anything at all to do commentary. I don't get paid anything to upload the footage. I don't get a squat for this. So, there's not much to say from there. Guess I am really doing it for fun. Until I can, you know, make some more original things myself. As for the commentary, it's going to be, I'm just going to say this is my three part word for it all. Commentary walkthrough gameplay. That's it. That's what you'll probably hear at the start of the videos from now on. Unless I get bored and come up with something else to do. At the starts or at the end. Not even going to ask you to visit our channel without you care. I mean, I put some more things on the channel to make it slightly more interesting. It's not just about Alice Madden's gameplay. Someone told me once that when they, they um, jumped onto one of my videos, like a fifth one, that they uh, didn't bother watching this because they didn't get it, they didn't understand it. And, I was, and I, my defense was, watch the first video and you'll understand it more. And then my second defense was, it's this game, it's not about understanding it. I mean, you can understand it on many levels, but on so many more, if you just want a straightforward answer, this game won't give it to you. It's not that kind of game. Call of Duty is a straightforward game. You have your guns, you have your enemies, you have your death. Medal of Honor is a straightforward game. You know? FIFA is a straightforward game, and it's, it hasn't even got a story to it. You're just, you're just shooting a ball. That's why so many people like it. But, otherwise, there's no real difference in this stuff. Like a ripe distillery with a whiff of halitosis and urine. That's a scent of unrecognized genius. It's a piss off. More empties than a Dublin brewery. The carpenter sent me. For starters, the carpenter is a pusillanimous, parsimonious, petty fucking moron. That's his maybe, but he sent me for this script. I need... Your needs a shite. I need a drink. Who cares? I need those responsible for my abortive career in chains. No joy. I need to know what love is. The world is mum. Just now, I need a dose of hide and seek. Buy me thrice, fair maid. Be quick about it. We can deal. It nags me that that bloke sounds Scottish, and that, unsurprisingly, he also has a drinking I'm problem. Hiding his true colours gives him an edge, but he can't conceal the way he moves. And that they're stereotyping writers of people with drinking problems. I've written more than my fair share of stuff in my time, not novels. 
of course, or you might have heard of me. But rather, just, you know, the usual little short plays and stuff, the short stories for friends. And I certainly don't have a drinking problem yet. But then again, I'm only recently legal. So I imagine it'll take time to develop. But I always thought the Irish were the ones who were known for drinking in excess. I know the Scottish were known for drinking in excess, but I thought they were known more for their violent dispositions. Because I can imagine right now that someone is going to, like, possibly a Scottish person will make a mistake of watching this video, will comment immediately, how dare you say Scottish people are violent, I'll hit you in the face for that. And justifiably, I would be right in my assumption. But, you know, what life, what it gets out, or whatever. I believe we're now using a level 4 Alice knife. Made the mistake earlier saying it was level 4, it's now an actual level 4. Obviously, our Tommy gun, machine gun things are level 4. It's, it's disappointing that you can't upgrade these weapons further than level 4. Because unless we get like a new weapon, I'm pretty sure we'll have more than enough teeth to buy all the upgrades. I mean, we're still only in chapter 2 and we got two level 4 weapons already. And one level 3. Yeah, well. See, this game of hide and seek is pretty straightforward. Oh, this is too easy! That octopus is hide is hides in the bottles that are full of ink. There's not even like a consequence of shooting them all. You can shoot as many as you like. It's pretty. I think I can't imagine that the octopus's job is hard. I mean, coming up with stories, yes, is hard. Coming up with a bad story is even harder. I mean, we all saw the movie The Producers, you know. But as for um, the octopus himself. I think that the fact he has eight tentacles and a fairly large brain means he and he's not restricted by anything to do with um, laws against putting saying nonsense stories. I reckon there's a good deal of chance that the octopus with eight arms can write eight times faster than an ordinary writer and We'll certainly be able to produce some sort of story. It's also been bugging me from the start why everyone in this game is not got any not got jobs to do with, you know, what they're known for. Right, the Mad Hatter goes to tea parties. Yes, that screams eccentric. Yes, that screams rich person. But the Mad Hatter is not meant to be the owner of a factory. That just that just seems to support many ideas about Victorian factory owners that they were eccentric and mad and were not very good didn't treat their workers well and I don't think that 100% time that was true of all of them anyway I mean there must have been some e exempts to the rule then there's also the matter of what we just encountered there Carpenter who is for some reason dealing with a theatre production. Now considering he is a carpenter, I didn't assume that he would, I assumed he'd be building the pl play, not like a producer of it, which he is. And then there's other, the other question of the mock turtle, whatever. Or where, yeah, mock turtle. Okay, it makes sense that he's, um, that he would be an admiral of a ship. I mean, he's a turtle, they should be in the sea. But the fact that before that he was in charge of a railway station as a railway conductor, that seems misplaced. But the point is, I'm assuming Carpenter probably was, he wasn't, I don't think he's in the original Alice book. I think he's in the second one, you know, through the looking glass. But I never read that. In all honesty, I never read the first one either. I just watched the movies. You know, I watched that original one from the 1970s, or the first time they had colour. And I didn't even watch that too long. I mean, it was... I find it 
I, even as a child, I wasn't exactly interested in Alice in Wonderland. It was kind of a bit of a boring story, really. I mean, other things interested me more. I mean, if Alice had been like this video game, now I would have been more interested. As a child, I probably would have been scared of Witness and not involved. You have me now. You won't have me again. But that's just me. I was never a fan of the Alice. I was more content to come up with my own stories than to, um, you know, read these ones. But I certainly was never half pleased about the Alice in Wonderland movie. You know, the newest one, the one that's got uh, guy who plays Sweeney Todd, very famous actor, using in a lot of movies like this. But I can't. Played Willy Wonka, I think. Anyway, I can't remember who. Um, I did just the main point is I found that their movie, their adaptation of Alice in Wonderland, to be awful. wasn't wasn't worth the money, or maybe it was because I think I managed to get like a, a discount. But if there wasn't a discount, it wouldn't be worth paying the full price for it. It wasn't that good a movie. <laughs> But, what can you say? I've liked some of the stuff he's been in, but it's, the old stuff appeals to me more. It just I just like to... I'm under the constant belief that in the olden days, you do, you were... F everything was awful. You didn't have good props, you didn't have good stages, you didn't have good mu music, nothing was good. So, as a consequence, you had to be a good actor. Some of the old movies actually had actors who would speak... Unpleasantness? remote in time and space, has only as much power as vivid memory offers. Four different languages. Because if they spoke the, um... If the actors in the old days, they, they couldn't rely on a computer that would fake their own voice and translate for them. Because they didn't have the stuff around those days, so they had to be better actors. They had to learn more things. Nowadays, if you ask an actor to do an accent, he'd just do his own accent. I mean, we we saw the kind of gumption that some people have had over the fact if you if you complain to an actor and say you're not putting on an accent, what what are you doing? That's not an accent. That's just you. That's like you speaking north um, normally and pretending that you've put on an accent. Just nonsense, really. But then you can make up for it if you have amazing graphics, loads of explosions, uber. It was just the fact they couldn't afford to do any of that in the old days. Or well, they could afford to do it, but the producers wouldn't do it. You know, they didn't either they didn't have the explosive, they didn't have the engineering knowledge, they didn't have whatever we have nowadays that allows us to make amazing high octane movies. They didn't have. So you make up for it with good acting. Which is why majority of new movies I don't like because it's the same old drivel same old nonsense made up just so that we can be marginally entertained I mean I've heard comedians joke all the time that they say ah oh, movies are made so I don't have to think about um, don't have to imagine what's in the books because that's my imagination brought to life I don't agree, but then again, I wanted the idea to become, one day, maybe, a filmmaker, for no greater purpose than to do exactly what these, the comedians were joking about, to get books that I've read and turn them into movies that live up to the books. It's too often now that books have come, that movies have come out based on books, and I say stringently based on books because they're usually nothing to do with the book. They're barely recognisable as related to the book. Or they'll have the best parts that are in the book are missing. I mean, if we just... I mean, Game of Thrones is a very good TV series, don't get me wrong. I mean, I watched that and that's what made me go out and buy the books. But having read the books, you see what's missing. And then you start to get angry. Because you're like, the book is very good, I know it's expensive, but why can't they try and stick to the book? I suppose if you did that, then you'd lose all your royalties, wouldn't you? Because you have to make it original in some way. 
Otherwise... It's all in the game. A fair cop. You've won. You're a good sport. And no one died. Join me in the library. Unlike some, I know Welsh. Otherwise, I suppose it would be claimed by the original author maker, whatever. But that doesn't mean I'm not happy about the it. The carpenter commissioned a song and dance number on morality. Art and good sense be damned. He demands mirth, silliness, and a street century all round. Wallace will do a hero turn as death. Imagine! I'll bring the script to the theatre. You can be on your way. I mean, oh, books. Captain has got your collection. Portion. The man really hires a proper talent. Come on. Books can be read in the space of long hours. I mean, I've picked up a 800-page book earlier, made by some German author originally. Took me, let's see, I don't know, 15 hours to read, maybe three hour or four hour breaks sometimes. I would read it for four hours and take a break. But otherwise it took an incredibly long time to read. I may go out and buy the Alice in Wonderland book just to satisfy my curiosity and that will probably take seven hours to read. I'm not terribly musical but you seem out of tune. It's not my fault. I can't hear my notes. The pipes are obstructed. I can see that. Why not do something about it? And it's angel my vocal cords. Who might do it for Everyone me? Everyone here has an excuse for doing nothing. Reminds me of the asylum. Well, with that said, an Alice in Wonderland movie can be completed in three hours and talk about all the same things. Because we know that when you read a book, most of the time the book will describe a smell, it will describe the look of the person, it will describe the feelings you get towards them, you know, all these things, experience, that's what books do. They describe the experience as best the author could describe it from his own point of view. Because when you read a book, you are reading the author's description, his own belief about what everything is like. When you watch a movie, you're watching the producer or whoever is mainly in charge of the movie, or even the writer, the script writer. You're seeing his vision of what the story, how the story unfolds. I just want the exact same thing, basically, be able to have a good story that sticks to the book as best as possible, but, you know, that's why it takes so long. You read, you see a movie, movie can speak all the, can say everything that's in the book in a matter of, in maybe a third of the time, because it can show you, through sight, you can imagine... By seeing what's on the screen, you can already, that already covers the dis description aspects of a book. No need to concern yourself with that, and that's about, I don't know, 200 pages gone there. Or maybe 100 pages of the book vanished, just by showing you the actual person. Then, if they talk about their emotions, um, or if you, just, if you just show with their expressions on their face, that covers the emotions aspect person crying would take up about six lines in a book where it explains how they're crying because of this, that and the other. If you show in a movie, you just show the person crying, that's it, problem solved. You know, you've just cut yourself about 30 seconds there, with five seconds of showing a single clip in the movie. It goes on like that, and soon enough you have a movie that's maybe three or four hours but has a lot of things in it. Some of these books are made into TV series. This is because, um, I don't know, TV, some people see the potential. Right? The Harry Potter movies, they go on for...
They go on for like 300 books in the beginning, 300 pages sorry, in the beginning, a thousand something at their height, and then 700, 800 for the last few tomes. And as we sure saw, they managed to extend the last Harry Potter movie um, so that it was over the course of two two books. They could probably have done the same about sorry two movies from one book. They probably could this could have done the same with just one. Harry, Harry Potter book. Well, they chose not to. It's like Lord of the Rings. If you ever seen the size of a Lord of the Rings book, you're generally shocked at how they are able to match Harry Potter, um, the Harry Potter movies in size, time wise. I mean, I have, I am lucky enough to have in my possession some of the early, you know, first editions of Lord of the Rings, um, Two Towers, Return of the King, Fellowship of the Ring, and even The Hobbit. These books are like 200, 300 pages long, and the writing's fairly large, they have pictures now and then, at like the start of the chapters, but it will surprise you at the amount, at these books are very well written, but they're written in a way that's sure easy to lost. read for even an Perhaps early mislaid. reader. I suppose I'll have to help you carry the tune. Better be light. It's the simpleness of the books which makes them so understanding to so many. Just a shame that they wouldn't give the author a Nobel, Nobel Prize while he was around. But the... The books were amazing, but they are very small compared to some other books. And yet, they managed to get three or four, three hours out of these books. And I sit at home with my dad, who originally introduced me to the books. You know, when the first movie came out, it was like, oh, I read those as a child. Gave me his collection of Lord of the Rings it. books so I could get ahead of the game. For more videos in this series, visit the playlist on our channel at www.youtube.com forward slash cnxgamers, then view our video playlist on the side. And don't forget to rate, comment and subscribe.